All right, what's up guys? So today let's talk about something a little bit different, but uh, something I get questions on pretty often, and that is, John, how do I prep for a class? Now, whether it's a pistol class, a rifle class, a night vision class, or whatever class, um, how do you prepare for it? Now, um, personally, right, I, I can only speak from my own personal experience as a student, is how I prepare for classes um, compared to others may be different. So take it or leave it, but this is the stuff that I kind of do to prep for a class. So first things first, when I start out um, looking and vetting an instructor, uh, I look at like a bunch of different factors uh, before I ever sign up for a class. I look at their history, right? I look at the way that they teach, if, especially if they have videos and stuff. I look at literature that they've written, right? If they have articles or if they write a blog or if they write in magazines or anything like that. Um, I also watch any videos I can on them, uh, not just of them, but interviews of them, uh, podcasts with them in it. Like I really, really vet my instructors because I value what I spend my money on, right? My money is hard earned. I spend my time doing the things I do to earn money. 20 bucks is 20 bucks, but, <laughs> but I still need to vet the instructors that I'm going to give my money, right? And more importantly, give my time. So uh, above all else, money, you can make more of it, but time we're not getting back. So I wanna make sure I vet my instructors enough to get the time that I'm gonna spend with them, the value out of that and learn from it. Now, if you didn't know, I, I have two goals in life, right? One of them, always to have fun, right? Have fun every single day. And then two, to learn something every single day. So whether I read something, I go to a class, I watch a video, like I try to absorb new information uh, because it just lets my, my brain kind of learn things and, and almost like process new stuff every day. So it's like anything else. If you don't use it, you lose it kind of thing, maybe. Uh, but most of all, it's, it's because I enjoy it. I, I enjoy that. I'm going to do things that I enjoy in life. So vetting my instructor, vetting the course that I'm going to go to is very, very important. Now, if it's like a local class that you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go work on my fundamentals and stuff, I get it, right? If you're, you're a seasoned student and you've done a lot of stuff like that, you probably have your own process, but you may not have to vet every instructor. You may already know um, their level of competency and what you're gonna get out of that class, and that's okay. But just realize like if you're gonna go do something that's extreme or like a, like a good example is I wanna go to a backcountry hunting class, right? Of course, it's like five days long and uh, to learn how to backcountry hunt. I've never done it before, right? I've lived in South Florida. The most hunting I've ever done was uh, two-legged critters overseas and stuff. So <clears throat> I wanna learn how to do that and do it right, do it ethically. So I'm gonna go take the class. Well, that's something I need to vet somebody for because there's not, like I can't just get Bubba to come show me how to do it because he may be doing things wrong. So really, really looking into the way that I vet the, the instructor, very important very important as you guys can already tell so after I vet them I choose the class I want to go learn um, which choosing a class is really up to you it's a very personal uh, decision right it's based off of what your needs are your wants uh, what you can afford all the other things that that kind of involve you going to that class and, and and just what do you value right like what do you value putting your time into and your money so very important on that side but after that Right? Hey, John, uh, I picked a rifle class. Perfect. Cool. Let's do a rifle class. Well, if I'm going to a rifle class or even a handgun class um, or a night vision class or anything really, um, I always start with, okay, what am I expecting in that class, right, based off the description? And if it's vague, that's even better, right, in my opinion, because now I don't have overly high expectations or overly low expectations. Now I'm just sitting there like, all right. I'm going to learn some things. I'm expecting to learn some things. There's some things that they, they kind of list out to give me an idea, but I'm not sitting there like, this is going to be the great class ever. And then I get there and then the, it's the worst class ever. So I, I don't want to have false expectations for a course either. So once I've read the description, I've gone through that kind of stuff. I've maybe watched some videos on the description of that class or of people that have gone to that class, maybe some after action uh, reports or reviews. Uh, online really kind of looking at those with with a grain of salt because everybody's experience and potential um, review is going to be biased or not biased or in some way 
or fashion different from the way that I'm going to view things. Um, just like when I watch movies, uh, I go look at like the whatever the movie reviews and I'm like, wow, that person really hated that movie and they said it was trash. But when I went, I actually liked it. So F them, dude. So <laughs> so but sometimes the reviews aren't as uh, accurate as you would want them to be because you view things differently than other people. Uh, Perspective is a thing. Now, uh, right after that description, understanding that, maybe some AARs, I'll go right down the list of recommended equipment. Right, so I look at what should I bring, uh, what kind of ammo, all those different things that I need to, to spec specific for that class have. Most instructors, or at least um, most, most of the bigger name guys out there put recommended equipment as well. Recommended equipment or additional recommended equipment or things that you should bring or you may want to bring, you usually want to bring those. Um, <laughs> a lot of people skip that section. They're like, ah, I don't need a spare gun. And they get there and they're like, my gun's broken. And then they can't fix anything and then they're screwed. <laughs> so, and then it comes down to maybe you can borrow something from somebody else. And if you're lucky, the instructor brought some extra blasters, um, which some of us already do, but depends on the class, right? Depends on how far we're traveling, all that other stuff logistically. So just be aware of that. Um, I like to bring spare parts. I like to bring uh, spare equipment so that I can, uh, if I need to replace some stuff. So the recommended stuff, or the, the for sure needed stuff, the recommended stuff and like the wants and stuff. Now, other than that list, right, what they put there, there's a few things I usually bring that's sometimes a little much, right, or a little bit more. And some things that I think is important to know preparing for a class. So one of the things I usually bring is always bringing a toolkit of some sort. Right with torque wrenches, uh, I, I use the little pack of fix it sticks, and uh, and I, I find I use that thing every single class, whether it's on my own stuff or somebody else's stuff mostly. So, um, so some tools, very, very important. Now, um, another thing that I bring to classes that I, I don't think a lot of people bring is a notebook, right? <laughs> uh, an actual paper notebook, yes, with a pen, an ink stick, right? And, and I actually take notes on uh, on a piece of paper. Uh, one of the biggest things and biggest reasons I do that, and, and oh, Jesus, I, I have the worst memory ever, right? I just don't remember things very easily. So I have to take notes so that I can retain information. Also, if we look at the way that humans learn, we have three different learning modalities. It, we learn by seeing it, by doing it, right? And by hearing it. Well, if I'm seeing it and I'm hearing it, cool, but now I'm doing a little bit of it before I actually physically do it, then I will learn a little bit better. Or at least in my opinion, or my experience really, I've learned a lot better. So really, really looking into taking actual physical notes. Reason I don't do it on my cell phone is because one, my phone, I get so many messages, so many texts, notifications, all sorts of shenanigans on my phone. And it's very distracting when I pull up my phone to take notes unlock it and then I look down that list of shenanigans that's come in and I'm like oh my god I gotta go through that but I don't want to go through that right now I have more important things or more prioritized things to deal with at the moment so just something to think about there you may want to go ahead and take paper notes versus taking actual uh, or or taking notes on your phone right in the notes section or whatever so very very important I I, I would never um, or in some classes you can videotape the instructors and, and their portions and stuff I would still take notes about those video portions and maybe notate like hey video three or something that's the one that I was talking about this and um, and reason being is because videotaping somebody and actually having the context to it you may not get the same thing if you're not paying attention enough to like actually receive both things now I've had some nights where uh, or some classes that are just so fast-paced that I have to take my notes later. Um, if you can, little voice notes, right? Little videos of yourself, like, hey, quickly, like, hey man, so this last drill, we did this, and uh, like little quick videotapes of yourself, like selfie style, really helpful. Um, and little pictures of like the drills and stuff like that. Help yourself learn, right? Get all the value you can out of these classes. So that's something I do that a lot of people don't do or bring to a class is actual notebook, right? You'll see me in classes and I'll have a notebook and they'll be shoved in my pocket folded, whatever, any way that I can get it into some kind of pouch or something so that I can 
actually like listen, do the class, and, and pull it out whenever necessary to write notes. So highly recommended. Something else to prepare your class or to go to class with is actually like wiping down and relubing your rifle. Uh, I get a lot of people that come to class and their rifle's super dry, dirty as hell, and it's just not functional, right? Or it was functioning last time they used it, but it's been sitting in the safe for a few weeks and now it's not working. Well, go through it, wipe that bolt down, wipe down your slide, clean out your mag wells, or, or like, like do a little, you know, a little PMC, right? A little TLC to the dang thing and, and, and a little pre-mission checks to make sure that thing works, right? Maybe change batteries in some of your equipment. For night vision classes, I highly recommend you guys come with a fresh battery in your nods so that you're not messing with it later when your battery dies. It's a couple bucks, yes, but it is gonna bring value to your time in the class without having your night vision die on you because you've been messing around with it for the last three days and then you get to class and then an hour in while I'm talking or I'm teaching something or somebody else is teaching something, guess what? Boom! And you're like, damn, dude, I can't see. Well, it's a night vision class, man, you gotta see. So um, then they're fumbling around with getting a battery or finding a battery or whatever it is and it interrupts and, and kind of disrupts their learning process. So preparing yourself battery wise, right, with electronics, whatever the electronics are, very, very important. Now, you may, you may not be able to change your RMR battery. I get that, right? If it dies, it dies. Go to your irons, right? <laughs> and, and like, it, I get it. Now, what's kind of cool, a little situation that happened to me, a little quick story. I was using my Hollow Sun 509T on my Glock 17 teaching. While I was doing a demonstration, my dot died, right? Battery went out. Cool, no big deal. I, I paused for a second. I was like, oh, it just like blinked out. Cool, I finished the drill with irons to show them, right, the demonstration. And then I actually pressed the, the button to go ahead and switch to solar mode, had my dot back, answered some questions and then redid the drill to show them again, give them another iteration of seeing it, which was really cool, right? So another functionality of my gear or that equipment that I was using at the time was able to like surpass that problem, which was cool. Like I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's sweet. So good on them, right? That little solar power thing. I thought I'd never use it. Bam, used it. So you never know. Now, um, with that, right? Making sure that your firearms are good and ready to go is also making sure all your mags are ready to go, right? Loading mags, make sure they're filled. Um, I usually leave at least one empty, just in case they wanna start with empty mags for some whatever reason. So um, that way I don't have to download one. So I always have my mags filled or I fill them when I get there. Usually if, if I'm traveling, they'll be filled. Or if, um, if I know that I'm gonna be teaching it, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill my mags up. Or uh, if I don't know, like I went to a, a precision rifle class in Yakima uh, last year in October, and I didn't know what he was gonna you know, do, so I left my two 10 round mags empty. That's okay, that's 10 rounds. So it's, it's not a big deal to load those at the time. But if you're jamming 90 rounds into three AR mags, or 45 rounds into three G19 mags, like you may want to load a couple of them, leave one empty, just in case they wanna do some kind of dry fire or something like that. So. I always leave one empty, just my own personal preference, because I can jam that one really quick in between shit, and I usually have enough mags that I can do most of the drills without having to worry about that empty, at least until we come back to reload. So just something I do may help you out and things like that. Now, a couple other things I'll do is actually check like bolts and little screws that are on my holsters. I'll make sure everything's still good and tight. Um, I'll make sure my belts are good, like the Velcro is not like coming apart weird or ripping or anything like that. I try to make sure all my gear is good. Now you won't be able to, you know, catch everything in the world before you go to a class, but it's important that you do that at least so that you can catch what you can beforehand. Something else that I think is important that a lot of people don't bring is sunscreen, a rain jacket, some Gore-Tex boots, and also uh, some form of snacky poos. I'm a big fan of having snacks, all right? I don't like to like, feel the grumbles and wait for lunch if lunch is coming. I like to like, man, I, I'm kind of hungry and I can take a bite, load some mags, take a bite, load some mags. So um, I, I recommend bringing some snacky poos even though you brought lunch or you brought like uh, whatever. And I always bring lunch. I don't go out to lunch. Reason for that is because sometimes places take longer to give me my food. 
Sometimes I have to drive further than I expected. Sometimes things may happen and I may not make it back to the range. I don't want that happening. So I'm a big fan of bringing my lunch, not leaving the range, staying with my gear, staying with all the shit that's there and just and, and eat with the guys that are there, right? And have conversation and enjoy myself, um, hydrate. Something else that a lot of people don't bring to the range or, or that's not on recommended equipment is bring a bottle of Pedialyte, especially on the hot summer days, right? Hot summer classes, I always bring Pedialyte. Not only does it rehydrate me better than Gatorade, but it's, it's bigger too, um, but it also works really well with hydrating you quicker. Um, so I'm a big fan of Pedialyte, it's good for you, it, it works really well. Um, I'll probably drink that once a day at each class. And if I feel like really sluggish at the end of the day, I'll have another one at the end of class, like at dinner. Um, which is weird at restaurants if you bring a bottle of Pedialyte in, but whatever. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Talk about all that. Uh, now. Something else that uh, I think a lot of people kind of miss out on is when you're having a multi-day class is uh, in between if you have rechargeable stuff. So uh, for example, my lights on all my rifles are now rechargeable, whether they're the cloud rain or the, uh, or the mod lights, all of them use rechargeable batteries. So I charge them at night. So I'll pop them out, put the new ones in that I had already charged and put the, the, the ones that I was using all night or the, the ones I used during that class and put them on, on chargers, especially if I used them. If it was a daytime class, I'm not worried about it. But if it was a nighttime, like low light, no light or, or night vision class, I'm gonna recharge those things because I want them to be fresh for the next day. Once again, I don't want that hindering my class uh, or learning process, all right? So hopefully this helps you guys um, when coming to prep for a class. Uh, I'm a big fan of having all that stuff that kind of gives you a chance to like learn more versus struggle. Um, I don't like to be on the struggle bus. I'm not one of those dudes that's like, I don't need sunscreen. I'm a hardcore badass man. I don't wear a hat. Like, dude, you can do all the bravado you want, but nature's going to win either way. So instead of fighting nature, instead of fighting against all those things, and instead of trying to get skin cancer in some form or fashion, uh, protect yourself a little bit. Be, be, uh, be a fucking man and take care of yourself. No, I'm kidding. Um, but be, be an adult, be an adult. You're there to learn. You're not there to be an, uh, an asshole or a badass in some form or fashion. Um, you're in a class, like learn. So take the time, learn from those things and, and hopefully you can get a lot out of that versus uh, getting hurt or hurting yourself in, in various ways. So hope that helps guys. Be safe, take care.